Well, today I'm going to read the second half of The Kingdom of Rendley, The Sorcerer's Shadow. And remember what, and then see this shadow. We haven't seen the Sorcerer's Shadow yet in, uh, plainly, but we're going to find out about it. And remember what happened in the first part of this book. Remember who the characters are in addition to Prince Lucas and Clara? We also have the Lady Knight. Uh, Dame Laurel. Dame Laurel is from the land of Trellis where people live in the trees and there is some sorcery going on there. And so Laurel, Dame Laurel and Lucas and Clara and Sir Desden, the grumpy knight, are going to Trellis to try to help. So here we go. I'll read the last Five chapters, chapter six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the chapters are called Chapter Six, Not Fair, Chapter Seven, Magical Mystery Tour, Chapter Eight, Trellis Beware, Chapter Nine, Dark Magic, Chapter Ten, Ghoul, Ghoul, G H O U L, that means like a ghost, Ghoul Duel, Ghoul Duel, that's kind of hard to say, isn't it? Ghoul Duel. And remember this other character we met, this strange boy named Petros? Uh, there's something odd about Petros, so I'm sure we're going to find out what it is later, but that's Petros. They helped him. He was being picked on by two of his friends, and Lucas and Clara helped him. So, anyway, on to chapter six, not fair. Here we are. Lucas gazed out of his window and shivered. A thick blanket of fog had settled over Trellis. Wow, Lucas thought, you can't see anything. He changed into his clothes, slipped on his boots, and hurried to meet the others in the dining room. At breakfast, Clara and Lucas ate steaming bowls of oatmeal. I like oatmeal. They both drizzled honey and sprinkled blueberries on top. I use blueberries in my oatmeal, too. Then... The team mapped out the plan for the day. With the heavy fog, the visibility is very low, Sir Desden noted. Dame Laurel set down her spoon. Dense fog is very unusual in Trellis. I have reason to believe that there's something sinister behind it. Sir Desden brought his fist down on the table, and the knights all flinched. Well, that settles it, he said. We can't have these younglings along if we're really dealing with sorcery. Sir Desden, he's trying to get rid of the of Lucas and Clara. He doesn't really like them. Lucas pushed back his chair and it scraped over the stone floor so hard the sound echoed throughout the entire dining room. You can't leave us behind, he cried. My father wants us to be part of this mission. It's by order of the king. You see here, here's Lucas, and he's standing up to, Sir, to, to Sir Desden. And there's Sir Desden at the end of the table, but Lucas is brave. He's standing up to him and said, you can't leave us behind, it's by order of the king. Sir Desden shook his head firmly, and also the king said, you must follow my orders. This mission is dangerous, and I can't let anything happen to the prince or the prince's friend. Both Lucas and Clara huffed in disgust. We've been on missions far more dangerous than this, Lucas argued. Sir Desden stood up from the table. The answer is no, he boomed. You are to stay behind, and that's an order. Ruskin growled. Ooh, there's Ruskin. He looks pretty fierce, doesn't he? And call off that pesky dragon of yours, he added. Then Sir Desden snapped his fingers and the knights followed him to the stables. I'm sorry, Dame Laurel said before leaving. Sir Desden is harsh, but it's probably safer this way. Lucas threw his napkin onto the table. This is so unfair. Clara rested her hand on the prince's shoulder. It is, but... Have we ever let anyone stop us before? Lucas looked at Clara thoughtfully. You're right. And we won't let them stop us this time either.
That's, uh, that's uh, Dame Laurel, the knight. I wonder why they don't call her Sir Laurel. I guess Dame is the female equivalent of Sir. Hmm. Chapter 7, Magical Mystery Tour. Lucas and Clara wandered the foggy streets of Trellis in search of strange things, while Ruskin refused to leave the castle. The dragon was disturbed by the unnatural weather. How are we going to find any clues in this? Lucas asked, brushing away the mist as if it were cobwebs. Maybe the fog is one of our clues, Clara said. What in all of Rinley could cause such strange weather? Lucas turned in a circle, listening for sounds of the city. You know what else is odd, he said? I can't hear any street noise. I don't think there's anyone out here today except us. Maybe Ruskin was smart to stay behind. No sooner had Lucas spoken these words than somebody bumped into Clara. Bump. Sorry, said a boy's voice. Clara recognized the shadowy outline of shaggy hair. Petros, she cried. Ah, it's a strange boy, Petros. There's something about him. Petros squinted through the fog. My friends from yesterday, he exclaimed. Then he looked down at his feet in shame. Oh, no, now I've hurt even those who were nice to me because they bumped into each other. That's why he said he hurt them. Lucas patted Petros on the back. <clears throat> no, it's not your fault. It's this fog. Clara laughed. Lucas is right. I can barely see my hand when I hold it out in front of me. Petros smiled as he did, and as he did, the fog began to lift. The storefronts and tree houses became visible again. How is your mission going, he asked. Lucas frowned. We had to stay here. The head knight thought it was too dangerous for children. Even Ruskin decided to stay at the castle. Petros nodded sympathetically. If you are free, then I shall show you around tell, tell us. Lucas and Clara looked at each other and nodded. We'd love that, the prince said. Yeah, there's the picture of Trellis. So there's somebody on a wire up there having fun, it looks like, <clears throat> going between tree houses. Petros escorted Lucas and Clara to the playground first. Zip lines, that's a zip line that I was showing you before, connected one tree to another. Slides zigzagged down and around the tree trunks. Like the marble runways the prince had built in his playroom. At the bottom of every chute, there was a ladder to climb back to the top. The playground was so full of kids now that the fog had cleared. When the kids saw Petros, they started shouting taunts at him. Taunts, that's like they're teasing him. They're saying mean things to him. Uh, and here's what they said. Oh, great, it's bad luck, Petros. That's what they call him, bad luck, Petros. Get out of here, you clumsy oaf, before you break the whole playground. Yeah, we're trying to have a good time here. As Petros stepped forward, some of the children ran away. Hmm. They're all saying mean things to Petros. I wonder what his issue is. There you can see he's got this look on his face. He looks pretty unhappy, doesn't he? He clenched his fist and his face turned a raging shade of red. Hmm, he must have magical powers. When he gets angry, look what, ha look what happens. The sky above them grew dark again with clouds that swirled angrily. Lucas and Clara thought a mighty storm was about to crash down, but then the sky mysteriously cleared up. Petros, Petros calmly turned to his new friends. I am sorry. This is the way it is for me and Trellis. The kids all think I am awkward and that bad luck follows me like a black cat. A black cat. Black cat Spider-Man, helping me. Healing jewels. Healing jewels. Healing That's a... Alexa is trying to talk to me. No, Alexa, be quiet, please. 
Well, that's silly, Clara declared. Sometimes Alexa just starts talking to me. Maybe it thinks I'm talking to her, but I wasn't. Okay. Well, that's silly, Clara declared. You are not bad luck. You've been nothing but kind to us. Lucas put his arm around Petros's shoulder, and anyone can outgrow clumsiness, even me. Petros smiled, and a ray, an array of sun broke through the trees. Ah, do you see something going on here? When he smiles, the sun comes through. When he's angry, there are clouds. So he's got some kind of magical powers. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but the weather is, is tracking what he's thinking. Thanks, he said. The friends walked all through the city. Petra showed them the great cathedral, the knotted turret, and even the sky farm. Finally, they reached the edge of the city. Hey, that's the witch of Bogperp's house, Lucas said, pointing. The witch of Bogperp's house. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go to the map now. I know Bogperp's. I know where Bogperp is. Maybe Trellis is in Bogperp. Let's go back to the map. Okay. Bogperp. Bogperp. Where is it? Oh, there it is. There's Bog. Oh, there's trellis. There's trellis. See there? It says T-R-E-L-L-I-S. So that's trellis. That's bog perp. And that's the uh, where the witch of bog perp lives. So that's where they are. They're right there. Now, back to where we were. Uh, okay, so I'll back up one sentence. Uh, Lucas says, hey, that's the witch of bog perp's house. Petros nodded. Trellis sits right in between Bog Perp and Hobbs Grove. Lucas and Clara gave each other a meaningful look. Maybe that's why there's magic afoot in Trellis, Lucas said. Petros's face darkened again. Magic? What are you talking about? Hmm, so he, that disturbs him. But before Lucas could answer, a horn sounded in the forest. The knights are back. Sorry, Petros, but we have to go. Lucas and Clara raced back to the oak tree, uh, the great oak tree lift. Wait, Petros cried, stumbling after them. I need to know why you're so worried about magic. But they couldn't hear him. Hmm. He said, I need to know why you're so worried about magic. Chapter 8. Trellis Beware. Trellis beware. B E W A R E. Beware. Lucas and Clara waited for the wooden doors to open. The townspeople had gathered there too. Petros watched from the edge of the crowd. His face creased with worry. Hmm. There they are. They're worried. He's worried. That's Petros. All at once, the large doors swung open and the knights' horses stampeded into the street. Everyone scattered to make way for the horses and a cry went up from the crowd. The horses had no riders. Look at this. You see this? And there's a shadowy thing over them. So the horses came back without the knights and without Dame Laurel. Then a dark, ghostly cloud swirled out from the inside of the great oak lift. The vapor formed into a shadow that roared an eerie warning. A shadow. Okay, this is the warning, it says. <clears throat> Trellis be warned on this dark day. Beware to all who cross my way. If nature is what you seek to save, then you must watch how you behave. No hurtful words or calling names. No hateful playground bully games. The knights who tried to do some good have now been turned to bark and wood. I'm going to read this again. This is very important. This is what the sorcerer's shadow says. Trellis, be warned on this dark day. Beware to all who cross my way. If nature is what you seek to save, then you must watch how you behave. No hurtful words or calling names. 
No hateful playground bully games. The knights who tried to do some good have now been turned to bark and wood. So he's saying he's doing these things because there has been bad conduct in Trellis. There have been bullies. There have been name calling. And that's what the problem is. And so the knights tried to tried to uh, fix things and they've been turned to bark and wood. And there they are on the right. You see Dame Laurel and the other knights, they've been turned to wood. Then the shadow vanished into the treetops like smoke in air. Lucas and Clara pushed into the tree and gasped in horror. The knights had all been turned into statues of wood. Ooh, it's a good thing Clara and Prince Lucas didn't go with them earlier. They'd be turned into wood too. That's, that's that's uh, Sir Desden, I think, and that's Dame Laurel. <sighs> chapter 9. Okay, we have two chapters left, and there's Petros again. Petros is the one with the magic. He's the one who's been picked on, so I think I see a connection here. There is definitely dark magic at work here, Lucas cried. We'll need the help of the wizards. Then the prince called for a scribe to send a message to the king. Wait! Petro shouted as he beckoned wildly. Follow me, it's important. As Lucas and Clara went to him, the crowd started booing and blaming Petros, saying things like, Evil boy, this is all your fault, and you've infected Trellis with something wicked. Oh, look at those mean faces. When they were finally done, Petros confessed, I need your help. This whole thing is my fault. His body shook as if he had been out in the cold too long. He's shivering with fear. Lucas extended a comforting hand. How could this possibly be your fault? He said gently. Clara stepped closer too. This is sorcery, Petros. It has nothing to do with you. Ha, huh, I beg to differ, says the reader. That's me. But Petros backed away. You are all wrong. This has everything to do with me. What are you talking about? Lucas asked. Petros began to cry. And, it, and at the same time, it began to rain. Hmm. I am the sorcerer, he declared. And the moment he said it, lightning flashed and thunder boomed. A wave of fear washed over Lucas as the rain fell down in sheets. He thought of the shadow. He thought of the wooden knights. He thought of the kids in the playground. Then he thought of how kind Petros had been to Clara and him. Do not worry, Lucas said, as evenly as he could. We can help. Lucas followed, uh, Clara followed Lucas's lead. Can you tell us more? Suddenly, the rain stopped. Petros took a deep breath, then explained. I was born with magical powers, but I didn't know it until the other kids began to make fun of me. The more upset I got, the more things ba the more bad things would happen. Like what? Lucas asked. Petros tightly clenched his hands. Trellis began to have very strange weather. Animals fled from their homes. The birds stopped singing. The crickets stopped chirping. Thunder rumbled overhead like a waterfall of boulders. But how, Petros, Clara asked. You're a good person. Petros brushed his wet hair back, revealing his large ears. Part of me is good, but a sorcerer's magic has both a good side and an evil side. When I get angry, the evil side of my powers begins to grow. Now my evil side has grown into a powerful, menacing shadow, and who knows what it will do next. He's lost control of the magic. Chapter 10. This is the last chapter, and it's called Ghoul Duel. Ghoul, G-H-O-U-L. That means like a ghost or an evil spirit. It's a ghost or an evil spirit. So like the sorcerer's shadow would be a ghoul. And duel is a contest between uh, two or more people. Ghoul duel. So this is like a contest between evil spirits. There's only one thing to do, Lucas said. 
You have to control your anger or your shadow will destroy Trellis and possibly, possibly the entire kingdom of Renly. As soon as Lucas spoke, the shadow swooped from the clouds. And that is my plan, the shadow shrieked. I will destroy all those who have brought harm to Petros. So the shadow has taken on a personality of its own, and it's evil. Lucas grabbed Petros by the shoulders and looked him in the eye. You are the only one who can stop your shadow. Call on the good magic within you. Choose to become a sorcerer for good. The shadow plunged between Petros and Lucas. He'll never destroy me, it roared. He's too full of anger. He must get his revenge. Hmm. So you think Petros is going to want to keep the evil, the evil shadow to be a, a, an agent of revenge? Hopefully not. Then the shadow reached dark tendrils out that touched Lucas and Clara. Instantly, the two of them were rooted in place. Oh, look at that. He put magic on them, and now their feet are rooted into the ground. They can't move. Lucas looked down. Their feet had turned into wood. No, Petro shouted. He picked up a stick and pointed it at the threatening shadow. You, you can do this, Petros, Clara cried. You have to replace your angry thoughts with good thoughts. Lucas gave Clara an admiring glance. She's right. Choose to be a sorcerer for good. The sorcerer you were meant to be. Tame the evil magic with positive feelings. That means like when you get mad sometimes, even if you don't have an evil shadow, you should try to control that. Try to think good thoughts. Try to control the anger. Being angry is not good for you. Petros and the shadow circled each other. I don't have any bad feelings, Petros began. I only have good feelings. The shadow laughed mockingly. You're more foolish than I thought. You're nothing but a sniveling outcast, and you know it. Nobody wants you here. Petros staggered at the insult. That's not true, Lucas shouted as the curse moved upward, turning his chest into wood. You have the gift of magic. Use your power to help Trellis, not destroy it. You are good. Lucas is, keeps telling Petros he's good, so maybe the anger will come out of him. Petros fought back harder this time. I do have a gift, and my gift is goodness. My gift is forgiveness. My gift is understanding and love. The shadow cringed and faded at the declarations. Petro saw the effect his good thoughts were having. He fought even harder. Now he's controlling his magic. He's getting rid of the evil sorcerer. Let's hope he can finish the job. I have the power to think and act rightly, Petro shouted. I am a force for good. You are nothing but anger and fear. Your dark thoughts are no part of me. Be gone. At this, the shadow turned into a thin film of smoke and was drawn into the stick that Petros was holding. No, it wailed pathetically. You cannot destroy me. I am hatred. I am anger. I am real. But the shadow's voice had grown weak and faint. I am stronger than you, Petros roared. My power is for good. You don't scare me anymore. See, so good can overcome evil. You can choose not to be angry. It's hard sometimes, but you can choose not to be angry. And there he is. He looks triumphant. When the shadow had vanished into the stick, Petros held it high and snapped it in half. Sunshine erupted through the clouds. You did it, Lucas and Clara cried. The curse was broken and they could move again. I am a new person, Petros said. I feel free and happy. All through the forest, the birds sang in the trees. Rabbits hopped into their holes. Bears toddled to their dens. Everything returned to normal. You are free, Lucas said. 
and so is trellis. Now let's check on the knights. <clears throat> the children made their way to the great oak lift. The knights were inside alive and well. They rubbed their eyes as if waking up from a sound sleep. There they are, there's Sir Desden, there's Dame Laurel. What's happening here? asked Sir Desden, scratching his head. The curse has been lifted, Locus said. The bearded knight raised an eyebrow. Defeated by the likes of you children? Not us, Lucas said. The evil shadow was defeated by someone pure of heart and full of hope. Then, in front of the crowd of villagers, Lucas took Petros's hand and lifted it up. Today, Trellis has found a hero. I give you Petros the Sorcerer, defender of all things good in the wood and everyone in the crowd roared with approval. Wow, that was a good story. The end. Okay, wow. That was The Kingdom of Renly, book 12, The Sorcerer's Shadow. And I'm going to look for some more of these books. I like these Kingdom of Renly books. Okay, talk to you later. Bye-bye.